Hi, uh, welcome to part two of the DIY rotary phase converter that allows you to run three phase machinery from a single phase supply. If you've not seen part one, you need to do that, especially uh, the safety warning. Electricity is dangerous, and if you get wrong, it could end really badly for you. In part two, We'll firstly be taking a look at how some of the other converters that are out there achieve what they do before taking a look at how this converter does what it does so you can see the differences between the different types of converter and their strengths and weaknesses. So firstly the static converters I tend to bunch them all together into the same category, whether you call them static, solid state, or digital. There's probably other names for them as well. I don't know how they work. I can't draw you a diagram, but essentially, they take a 240 volt supply, and then there's a box with a kind of circuit board in. And there's a load of blobby things in there which magic a three-phase output. Notice on the three-phase output, I've not drawn a neutral. Um, whilst we're talking about not drawing things, I've not drawn an earth on anything. You need everything to be earthed. I've not drawn it because it goes without saying that you need it. Um, and it just complicates it to include the earth in everything. This is in common with many circuit diagrams, an earth is not drawn. but. Back to the subject, there's no neutral. Um, many of the static converters, solid state, whatever you want to call them, don't include a neutral. And certain machine tools and other machinery do need a neutral for them to operate correctly. What you'll find with these static converters also is they're not really up to running more than one machine. And many of them have a minimum motor output as well as a maximum so they might be sized say to run between three and six horsepower i don't know that many people who buy a single phase piece of machinery and then don't buy another one in a couple of years time and because these converters generally are only capable of running one motor they can't cope with talking to two different motors it's often not practical to buy a larger converter because you know that in two years time when the wife allows you to you're going to buy a milling machine to go with your lathe. The other thing with these is after a while the uh, little blobby components inside tend to decay. Um, as you can see these ones are already melting um, and after a while you've just got to pick up the box and throw it away and get another one. The rotary converters tend to be a little bit more repairable. A lot of the three-phase conversions out there require your machines to have a dual voltage motor. You'll start to see diagrams like this and people talking about star and delta and you can alter the connections inside your motor terminal block to change the motor from star to delta in order that the motor can run on a three-phase supply but a three-phase supply of a reduced voltage it's quite easy to generate three phase 240 volts but to generate three phase 415 takes a little bit more. A lot of the literature I've seen from converter manufacturers tells you that most motors that are still in existence will be dual voltage motors and there won't be a problem. Of the five machines in my workshop not one of them is a dual voltage motor so, moving on to the rotary converters, which of course are capable of running multi-motor loads. This is what you'll get from many of the rotary converters. It's really simple and it's really effective. Your live 240 supply goes onto one of the phases. The neutral from the 240 supply goes onto another phase. And from the live, to the third phase, a capacitor is introduced to help magic the third phase into life. And from those three connections on the motor, you take wires off which become L1, L2 and L3. These are the three lives of your three-phase supply. It's all good, but 
again there's no neutral if your machines require a neutral there isn't one neutral ought to be the star point but actually your neutral is there so this arrangement really I've drawn it wrong haven't I it really ought to be over there like the awful mess in part one with the phases drawn over there because here you've got a floating neutral your neutral which should be at earth as described in part one isn't um, so you can't really use that it does work however if, you, if your machines don't need neutral loads of people it'll do fine if you look between any two of the phases there's one phase there and there's another phase there that should be 415 volts, shouldn't it? Hmm. If we look back where it's coming from, it's only 240 volts. So this arrangement here requires you to have dual voltage motors, which you can dive into, alter the connections, and make them run from 240 supply. Again, if your motors do that, and you don't mind altering your starters and overloads, problem solved. You've got your machines up and running. But again, not all of the motors out there are like that. and of the five in my workshop, I can't use this system on any of them. So, how do you know if you've got a dual voltage motor? This is the motor on my shaping machine. As you can see, it's a reasonably new motor. It's externally thinned, unlike many of the older motors that have a smooth casing. You might be able to make out on there. The field which says voltage is marked at 380 to 440. This doesn't mean it's a dual voltage motor. That means that is the operating range at which this motor is designed for. If it's a dual voltage motor, you can look in the amps field and you'll see two different sets of current readings. This one has one set of current reading. It says 4.6 amps. If it was a dual voltage motor, we're looking at something that says 240 to 415 and the amps corresponding to 415 would be approximately half of the amps that correspond to 240. However, this motor, as you can see, has only one figure for the amperage rating, which means it's not a dual voltage motor and probably won't be happy if you try and run it using a converter that produces 240 volts three phase. Okay, we're getting somewhere near now. This is the next development of the rotary converter. And the difference between this and the last one is, of course, there is a step-up transformer, which increases the single-phase supply from 240 to 415 volts. So there's the single-phase supply. It goes into a step-up transformer. So that increases the voltage here to 415 volts and goes on to one phase of the live and another phase of the neutral. Therefore, we have the correct value of 415 volts between two phases. Marvellous. From the live phase, there is a capacitor that goes to the third phantom or false phase. The capacitor helps this one along and helps it to be strong. And from these three connections that we've uh, made wires to, we take our supply lines off to become our three-phase supply and they are L1, L2 and L3. And this is getting quite close now. You've got 415 volts between each of the phases. However again there's no neutral. If you don't need a neutral you might not think that's a problem and most people don't need a neutral. I do. Hmm, where's the neutral gone? Oh it's there isn't it? The neutral here, which should be our star point, again, isn't actually there. The earth is there at zero volts. But again, the neutral, we've got this floating neutral problem again, haven't we? There's probably a much better way of drawing that diagram than that. But neutral, which should be at zero volts, same value as earth. Because, of course, you can touch neutral of your 240 supply and not get a shock. I don't recommend it, though. Neutral's not really where it should be, which is why we can't really use it. If you did tap into neutral there, and this is how I was running a phase converter for a short while before I started destroying motors, you could tap into that neutral, 
but it would be 240 volts thereabouts above earth and of course as I described in part one this little chap here he's 415 volts above earth that should only be 240 to neutral but because your neutral's not where it should be and it's moved if you touch that phase there that's going to give you a 415 volt shock I've never had one of those but I'm told that they're quite entertaining so it's going to run your machines really strongly if you've got modern motors and modern motors have got super duper strong resilient insulation on it's probably going to do you fine the motors are certainly going to run fine up until the point that they develop an insulation breakdown for years people were telling me that don't run a phase converter it gives you insulation breakdown and i never really understood why but this is why it's because from here to the casing you've got 415 volts it should be 240 you're putting more pressure down your garden hose pipe and that's more likely to make it go bang it's time to think again isn't it and finally this is the basic arrangement of the converter which is featured in the video before starting you see this is changeover switch here this is purely to start the converter what I've not drawn on any of the other plans for the other converters is how you start them. I've not drawn it because we don't need to know that because I'm not making a video about these. But there are starting arrangements for the other converters. It's more than just having a capacitor. Normally you have to have increased capacitance. But you don't need to know any of that because we're not using it. So, starting with our single phase 240 volt supply. We go into a changeover switch. The changeover switch has a start position and a run position. So to start off, we're applying live to one of the phase legs, as with all of the converters. And we're applying neutral to one of the other phase legs. That, in combination with our starting motor, the little single phase motor that spins up the main motor with a V-belt, will get the converter up and running and up to speed. But of course, that's not going to give us a true three phase supply, so we need to do something else. The switch gets moved to the run position. Just as before, the live of the 240 goes straight onto one of the phase legs. But this time the neutral goes to the star point of the converter. This is the first time that we've seen the neutral go where it actually needs to be because of course on a three-phase system, as in part one, as I showed in part one, neutral is the star point. The reason you can't start in this format is that you're putting all this current through only one winding. The winding has resistance, but there's only one of them in this circuit here now. And there'll be so much current flow that you'll likely blow the main fuse to your house, which is embarrassing when you have to call out the electric board to explain what you've been up to. So after a load of hard work, we have finally got there. We've got our single phase supply coming in, live and neutral, 240 volts, single phase. Without needing a step up transformer, we've now got 240 volts from any one phase to neutral, which is in the right place at the star point at the same value as earth, not off to one side as a floating neutral. And to beat that, there are 415 volts between any two of any of the phases. So this is actually there. This is closely replicating what you should be getting from a proper plumbed-in from the National Grid three-phase supply. You've also got a neutral, which you can use on your machines, which very few of the other converters will give you. So why is this converter so much more efficient than everybody says of rotary converters? If we go back to where it all starts for us, it starts at 240 volt single-phase supply. There's a sine wave of a representing a 240 volt supply. And that sine wave represents one rotation of the electrical machine that made it. 
and one rotation is 360 degrees. Therefore, it follows that the halfway point is half of that, it's 180 degrees. Looking at our three phase machine, each of these are 120 degrees apart. So this little supply that's coming along here, that's spaced at 180 degrees apart, where it's shoving down two wires that are actually 120 degrees apart, kind of fighting with each other. With this setup, because we're sticking our full sine wave -da, straight down one winding, exactly as it would have been generated in the power station. All the power in the UK comes from a power station. It's all generated as three phase. And three phase is distributed to the towns and villages and those houses that don't need three phase just have our 240. This is where we're getting our 240 from. In part one, the diagram, we just go from any one phase to neutral and that's our 240. And that's where your 240 in your house comes from. It is one phase and there it is. And that's what we're putting in our machine here to make the three phase. Downside, you've got two false phases to generate rather than one false phase. And there's a bit of um, jiggery pokery with capacitors to bring these two phases up to full strength. Sorry guys, it's gonna go into part three. I'm getting long again, I'm talking too much. So thank you for staying with me this far. It's taken much longer than I thought it would be. There will be a part three, and in part three, <clears throat> And there won't be any more references to any of the other converters. It'll be purely everything that you need to know about all of the sizes of these things you need, how to wire up the capacitors, all the nitty gritty of how to get this thing actually running properly and above all safely so that you can run your three phase machines in complete confidence that you're not going to be killing them or yourself. Hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to seeing you in part three.